Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. Why do you laugh every time I say that? <laughs> it's so loud. Because yeah, okay, my ear not... is right here. <laughs> We're so close together today. <laughs> it's Jimmy and Bill. <laughs> Anyways, today we got a good one. And Bill's doing most of the talking, so it'll be uh... fine. All right, on this one. This article, we, we, took, we read it found it very interesting and I have some questions about this article myself and basically the heading of this article is the housing market isn't making sense anymore <laughs> that's the truth <laughs> what's going on and the housing market is not making sense because I just spent the last few hours you know researching watching one video that people are saying hey the housing market is gonna be fine then I saw another video that the housing market is crashing, and then I read an art, uh, another article that mm -hmm. it's bad, another article that's good. It's all over the place. It makes no sense. So I do have my opinion on what's going on with the housing market, mm -hmm. and I'll give it towards the end, so stay till the end, because uh, even though I'm not a realtor, I do have a strong opinion about it and what is going to happen the rest of 24 and 25. But. I'm going to ask Bill some questions, and Bill's going to answer the questions, and uh, let's just see what his opinion is on this. In the meantime, do me a favor. If you like this kind of content, consider subscribing. It's really, really important to me and Bill, and it greatly helps, and it's much appreciated. Share and like and give it a thumbs up. So, Bill, all right, we're, we're in Wesley Chapel today, and um, I still see a lot of building going on. Oh yeah, and we yeah. just we just did a whole thing. Like I'm, I'm not talking about like 20 homes, 30 homes, or I'm not even talking about hundreds of homes. I'm talking about thousands of homes. Yeah, we have one community going in, uh, not too far from where we're at right now, that has 38,000 homes going in one community. Um, there's another community, another 12,000 homes. You know, 15,000. We're talking. It's these are these are huge, huge, huge master plan communities. So, so I guess what my point is, you know with the uncertainty of the housing market is these people are investing remember we were just talking about it off camera mm -hmm. millions and we said hundreds of millions i said yeah. do you think it's reaching a billion dollars it, it, it has summer? to be i swear it has to be so i'm like they must do their research because the last crash in you know 07 08 when things were rough you know all the way up to what 2010 you know yeah they lost their shirt right so they have to be like have a team of people saying hey you know what this is a bad time to buy but i do notice some shifts in the in the builders and what right. they're doing i do notice that mm -hmm. could you talk about the shift yeah so what we've noticed is that builders have shifted from the larger communities shifting down towards the smaller sized communities more um, instead of going with these like luxury starting at a million dollars eight hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars and up communities we're getting more into you know quote price point communities where you're in the 300s to 500s depending on things that you get particularly when it comes to the new construction stuff you know there's townhouses and right. single family homes mm -hmm. so but that's because that's where the demographic is that's the number we're short of houses in America based on the number of people that are eligible and of age to purchase a home. So that's where they're pulling a lot of this data from, plus obviously a lot of other things. But you know, our population continues to grow every single day and we need homes for people to go into. So basically they're building smaller, more affordable homes. Absolutely. So because that's, that's what we need. We that's need what that. they need. So basically here's my next question. I do a lot of new construction inspections, you know, mm -hmm. pre-drywall and afterwards. And I talk to the project managers, I'm not gonna give any names or anything, but they're telling me that cancellation of contracts are up to a third on new construction. And I'm sure that there probably is some cancellation. I would be curious to see what the cancellation rate was like prior to the unicorn years and COVID-19 to see where things are. You know, I, I would want to know that. That would be my biggest question. Um, you know, because typically when you cancel a contract in new construction, you lose a lot of money. There's not a lot of wiggle room for cancellation periods um, to get your deposits back. So when you walk away from a home, you typically walk away from the home um, and you're going to lose some deposit money there. And that can be pretty significant. So if you are going to put money down, just make sure you read your contracts and you understand your clauses and things. And then, you know, um, you know, and then God forbid, you know, you don't get totally qualified for financing. Um, you know, make sure you understand that as well. And I think too, is I've noticed a trend 
is so they have inventory homes where they build them up to a certain point to where they're ready to go live mm -hmm. and they get their co their certificate of occupancy mm -hmm. and then it'll say so i get like a sheet every um every week uh, from the builders all around here and they'll say okay this one's going to be this is for sale it's this they've already picked ever all the amenities and everything that goes into the home they'll use an interior designer and then this one's going to be ready in one month this one's going to be ready in so they, two they months stagger them. they so stagger they, them so out they don't have a lot of money laid out yeah but the purpose of that is too is it's it's modeling more to the traditional resale market that you would see okay let's, let's it's safer we're gonna have a rapid fire a little bit so uh, mortgage applications rates went down. Yeah, okay? they were like really high, you know, yeah, almost eight. hitting eight. Yeah, they hit eight. And, and then now they're like, when we're filming this, yeah. I think the last I heard was six point three seven five. But home applications, the mortgage applications stayed low. Like nobody jumped in. They thought there was going to be a mass. I think that's just. I think that's just uh, positive thinking. To, to an extent. I, I, I see people say, oh, we're gonna have a massive flood, and I just don't see it. The closer we get down to that five and a half to 6%, I think then you're gonna start seeing an uptick in things, but you don't want a massive flood because then we get back into a bad situation. All right, so here's another thing that I put a note down. Okay, so in some areas, and, and increasing a lot, it's shifting from a seller's favor to a buyer's favor. Absolutely. So you agree with that? Oh yeah, absolutely. So uh, the closer we get to a balanced inventory market, which is roughly six months, five to six months of inventory, um, the closer we are to an equal favor buyer versus seller. So, and then there's different markets. New construction has been a buyer's market for quite some time, and uh, in, in our area at least. And we're starting to slowly get into a buyer's market to where you have a little bit more leverage and choice mm. when you're picking in resale right now. So, okay, next question. According to this article, they said it's slow existing home sales. The first half of 2024 saw the slowest pace of existing home sales since 2009. Okay. Do you, do you believe that? Yeah, and again, that's a statistic that you know you have to kind of look at where the numbers go and what they were talking about. It's the slowest pace. If you look at how many units have been moved this year comparatively, we are up. So it's, we have to kind of see where that goes. All right, let's see if you can answer this question. Okay, high cancellation rates. Okay, June saw about 15% cancellation rate under homes under contract. This is not just new construction. It's across the board. It was 15%. Mm -hmm. Is that normal? 15% or do you think that it's excessive 15% and do you think that the cancellation rate is going to be even higher like people getting into homes and they're like I know one home I did the inspection the inspection was good it was a good home mm -hmm. but what ended up happening at two days after the inspection mm -hmm. there was a house just down the block that went for sale cheaper and nicer <laughs> and and that is just you're not closed until you're closed, unfortunately. Um, I, I Truthfully, I don't know. 15% cancellation rate is good, bad, or indifferent. I'd have to go look that one up. But I have started to see cancellations go up. I just don't know. If you want to compare them to like last year, year before, et cetera, yeah, they're probably different numbers because you know, you're comparing to COVID times, right? Mm -hmm. But if we go back before COVID, I don't know if that's truly a good number. But I have seen cancellations going up and my gut and my feeling just from history says that it's this is relatively normal cancellations are not the end of the world mm -hmm. nobody wants them right. but on the buy side and the sell side you know the as a seller you should really make sure that the person wants that home and that they're qualified because you don't want to pull your house off the market um, when there might be some doubt so just kind of working with your agent on that is, is really really important on the sell side and um, you know but things do fall apart, and that is a very valid uh, reason because there is more choice right now. And if you're early in your contract, depending on where you live and how your contract is written, um, you do have a little bit of a grace period to where you can get out, and you know you're not penalized for that kind of stuff. So All right, let's talk about this one. Inventory is increasing across the board. The rise of housing inventory is leading to more contract signings because more houses are going on the market, but we have cancellations. But it's People along the seacoast and vulnerable areas are having a very difficult time selling. And it's usually, sometimes it's not about the house itself. Sometimes it's just about 
insurance or taxes, but mostly insurance, especially here in Florida. Yeah, and assessments and fees and things like that. So it's just talk about the insurance because Texas is having a problem now. Mm -hmm. California, there's a big insurance company yeah. moving out, you know, so they don't want to do any more insurance in California. Florida, it's a nightmare with insurance. And I know people that will not move to Florida just because of insurance. Right. Um, so they're not moving here because of, between car insurance and house insurance, it's ridiculous. I just want you to touch on what you think the insurance market effect is on real estate. Well, that's a huge, huge, huge effect on real estate. And that's why everybody's you know saying crisis and things like that, because it truly is. Insurance rates are so high. Um, people just don't understand until you get start getting your quotes for insurance. The second that you go into a flood area, uh, your insurance rates can double, triple, quadruple. I mean, it's it's astronomical. So though, when you're making a selection, you need to get a really good idea of what your insurance is. And my recommendation is to find a really reputable broker that can help you along and answer questions. The fill out the online form thing and have the guy that sits in a call center call you is probably not the best idea. And uh, just just being honest, it, it, there's those those platforms work but if you're really really concerned about your insurance you really need to speak to somebody that can really advise you and get you in the right program and help you understand before you even yeah. before you even close on yeah, the house absolutely but okay so let's talk about this so we went over some stuff and mm -hmm. everything so that this is my predictions and you i think 2024 because of its election year and still because of interest rates and the job market is getting hammered. Yep. Okay. I think those three things, including insurance mm -hmm. and you know all the other stuff, is going to really give housing a really hard time. You know, and for the rest of this year, and I think no matter who's president, the first six months of 2025 is going to be very difficult when it comes to the housing market for realtors. Do I think you you guys should buy a house? I would buy a house if it's the right deal, but I think if you're sitting on some cash, I think the opportunity to find the right deal is going to be tremendous for you. I think you'll have more opportunity to, to buy a, a great house at a great price now than you did in the last four years. Yeah, so if you take a look at some numbers, roughly 40% of Americans don't have a mortgage. So the wealth in the, in the real estate space is there because they're not going to be tied to a mortgage rate. They don't care about, you know, a mortgage rate. They can sell their house and then they can put the money into whatever it is that they choose. Mm -hmm. So, or they can take out a, a smaller loan, you know, and it doesn't affect them as much because they have the equity in their, in their property and they have no mortgage at all. Mm -hmm. Maybe they don't want to move. There's, you know, there's two sides to that coin too. People that don't have a mortgage don't necessarily want to move. But at the end of the day, if you can't walk up the stairs anymore, you know, mm -hmm. or if you need a bigger house because your family's expanding for one reason or another and you have to go move, well, you're going to move. It's the way it works. But what do you think? Okay. So, you know, the article is the housing market isn't making sense. What's going on? What do you think is going on in a couple of minutes explanation? It's, well, it doesn't make sense. It's because there's too much that's changed and it changes too fast. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Everything's changing way too fast. There's too much, it's, there's too much going on. Right. Like that's the problem. We've got high interest rates. We've got, you know, insurance, crisis. insurance issues. We've got an election coming up, which really doesn't play that much into the market, believe it or not. That only shifts things about 5%, if mm -hmm. you don't want to throw down numbers. Um, and then they typically rebound uh, immediately after the election, and then you make the, the, the job the market. Up. People aren't secure about their yeah, jobs. The jobs are just, it's like this. And I think because of everything that's gone on from COVID to this time, I think there's just been this long run of uncertainty in the market and all the misinformation and all the different opinions out there you know the saying this is what's going to happen or this is what's going to happen and i think that when when people get scared and when people don't know they stop you freeze that's just nature like it doesn't matter and i think that's a lot of what's going on right now and then so that's it's really important that if you're even considering making a move mm -hmm. That's where you have to sit down and actually speak with, you know, a, a 
a real estate professional that understands they don't need to throw numbers and market but they need to have an understanding of what's going on and help you build a plan for you yeah but like what i always say i said this on a few videos like you know i even told my kids i mm -hmm. said listen if you're going to buy a house and you're paying a thousand dollars a month rent okay mm -hmm. you're paying a thousand dollars a month rent but now your mortgage payment with taxes and insurance is going to be three thousand the extra two thousand before you buy the house give it to me and i'll put it in a savings account for you right and if you and because the mortgage company you're gonna have to pay them three thousand right and then if in six months you don't ask me for that two thousand say hey you know what dad i really need that two grand or this came up or that came up mm -hmm. you know i can't give it to you then you're not ready to buy a house right that's that's as simple as that yeah it's because <clears throat> the average mortgage payment is like thirty five hundred dollars now which is ridiculous i think well i mean that's everybody's perspective so and that's why everybody you know four million some odd people don't think that that's too too bad or at least you know maybe 50 percent of those because the other half doesn't probably have a mortgage do you think that there's gonna be a spike in foreclosures I'm not going to use the word spike. I think we're going to see an increase in foreclosures because, you know, back at the beginning of this year, uh, we saw some articles came out that said there's a spike in foreclosures are up 300 percent. And then when I actually pulled the uh, the numbers from where they got the data for their amazing spike, we went from three foreclosures in the Tri-County area up to uh, like five. So, you know what I mean? So it's it's <laughs> when you when it, we can make an article look like whatever we want. Um, so, but I do feel that we're probably going to get back more to a historical norm when it comes to foreclosures because right now we are below a historical norm. All right, so let me ask you a question. Rest of the 2024, good, bad, normal for real estate? No, the rest of 2024 and the beginning of 2025 is going to be rough. Okay, so you agree you know, with me. Um, it's because there is uncertainty. People are still going to buy houses. People are still going to sell houses. Obviously, like you said, there is a, there's a, ton of opportunity out right now so if that's why it's important to sit down and actually make a plan well if you because, have cash yeah well no just there. anything even look i just saw a 2.9 percent interest rate this morning on a new construction loan how's that so they do the first year and then the interest rate goes up a little bit and then the and it locks in at whatever so you're it was. talking about an arm it's an adjustable rate mortgage but it's it's a they they call it something different now and it's, it's like a one-year arm probably yeah and it's so but it's it's locked in at a, at a very it was locked in at five and change or six and change so it really wasn't too horrible and it wasn't a long-term thing and there was no balloon at the end hmm. so Excellent. there's there, it, there's creative ways to do things and to take opportunities and when you're, you're talking new construction particularly out here in our area you know this is where you're going to have more growth so opportunity because as you just saw there's not much out yeah not here where we're at right now but where we were all right at the end of the day we both agreed the, the it's market gonna rough. it's gonna be rough and the market doesn't make sense yeah that's today's video do me a favor consider subscribing and share the video and watch this video over here it's this is a good one i just picked it up for you guys and we will talk to you on the next one thank you see you on the next one thanks